Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast back again, coming from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Is ready to get geeky, talk tech, uh, and then talk about all the crazy, crazy news this week. We're going to touch on a couple big ones, including uh, what social media has been doing in Ferguson, that whole story there, at least from the social media side, and uh, a little bit about the Ice Bucket Challenge. I I participated, and we'll talk about some other people that might have too um but with me today uh back in his own home office is john chichilla at chichilla or at chilla, at chilla. i got too many chiz in there <laughs> at chilla on the twitters how's it going today all right sir also with us back again uh she heads up big big design great pittsburgh company here is cynthia klosky how you doing i'm great good day to you back again um and of course you can join us here we're live tuesdays at 6 30 p.m eastern time roundabout at live.sorgatronmedia.com uh you can also hit us up we're at awesome at awesome i'm sorry awesomecast.com or sorgatronmedia.com for all the shows we do here on tuesday night we're running all night long every tuesday uh, you can also drop us a line uh at awesomecast on the twitters uh we're also on facebook and the google plus and please uh f- subscribe rate comment share wherever you find this show we're on audio and video formats including youtube itunes stitcher spreaker um and i think this one's on no this one's not on iHeartRadio. i think i made that mistake last week too uh but go check us out and or th- ask iHeartRadio radio why we're not on there yet because every other show is um and of course uh, uh tell your friends and uh, please uh check out the great patreon we're trying to build the show uh and uh, maybe expand it out hopefully and uh just like get some stuff working better around here so if you enjoy this if you find value in the show some of the stuff we talk about here some of the conversation uh please go to patreon.com slash awesome cast and you can support us in that way and also please support slice on broadway now with two locations in Carnegie and uh, Beachview in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Uh, great, great supporters of us here at Sorgatron Media. So let's get started with our picks of the week. Uh, Cindy, it looks like you got an interesting one here. Well, I am, I'm a person who lives by to-do lists. If it's not on a to-do list, it doesn't get done. Um, mm-hmm. But then if it's not on my calendar, I may not see it either. So, um, so I recently discovered or was told about, I guess, this um, app called Timeful. Um, and it was developed by some um, psychology researchers, including Dan Ariely, who um, is a really interesting guy. He talks about how people are irrational, but for very rational reasons. He's a fascinating researcher. Anyway, so this app, um, I guess, monitors what you actually do, like when you put your to-do list on your calendar, and then over time, it starts to suggest putting them there itself. So I'm starting to play with it now, and I'll report back. But um, it's uh, free, so it's a good thing to try out. And if you're the kind of person who has trouble finding time in your schedule to exercise or remember to floss or whatever, they, uh, they have some um, – this might be our salvation. Is this already integrating with, like, uh, you know, like your Google Calendar and, and stuff like that? Exactly. It so- integrates with your Google Calendar. Right now it's on iPhone. It's coming to Android so you can sign up for the list. Awesome. But so it integrates with both your Google Calendar if it's on your iPhone and with your regular, you know, Mac calendar and to-do list on there. Oh, I can't wait to hear, hear how I'm actually, uh, my, <laughs> my system, I, 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 I have to actually renew it a little bit, uh, reread the book. But uh, I, I do the getting things done mentality uh, mm-hmm. with uh, Remember the Milk kind of tied into my my reminders on my iphone but that's really kind of junky i think Mm -hmm. um but between that and and the holy crap google calendar management um so i'm interested to see it because so it looks like it it, it kind of like finds time to am i seeing this right it looks like watching the video here it kind of resource things for you a little bit i mean what it does is you say each day okay i want to exercise you know three times a week Mm -hmm. And so every day it's like, well, is today a day that you want to exercise? Where does this fit in your schedule? Then over time, it'll just put it in your schedule. You know what I mean? So you, so over time it learns that you tend to like to exercise in the evenings or that's when you end up doing it. So it puts it there automatically for you. Okay. 
Awesome. Awesome. So you can check that out. What, what's the website for it? It's time full, um, full with just the one L.com. Awesome. And of course on the uh, Apple uh, iTunes store, I'm going to go snag that too while I'm at it. Chilla, what do you got? What do I, 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 I'm actually, I'm was in the process of maybe changing mine, but I'm going to keep what I got. Okay. So I have Roku is actually embedding their technology in a newer TV that's coming out. And so this is, to me, the first smart TV that's actually using a real third-party media player. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm pretty... I actually like the Roku. Um, I'm a fan of the Roku. I'm a fan of Apple TV. Um, I'm not going to lie. I still have my Chromecast in the box. Oh, no. Um, But (laughs) I just haven't found a reason to to bring it out yet, and I'm waiting for that reason. But, I mean, this is... their technology directly in the TV. Um, it's, a, it's a high sense TV, so it's not your your mainstream Samsung or uh, Panasonic or any any of the higher end TV. But, but, but um, I, I see kind of. Oh, I think we're losing them. The future room with Oku or. An Apple TV. Are you frozen? Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, yeah. We're, we're back. You're back. You're back. Uh, your video is not going, but, but I got your audio back. Mm-hmm. Hold on one second. Let me close some tabs here. Okay. All of a sudden, when I opened that, when I, oh, there we go. Um, when I opened that link, for some reason, it it hung Chrome. Um, but now I, I could see this is where I I hope more and more manufacturers go. Oh, well, no! Wow. I think Cynthia was like talking, and then it was my fault. I was saying that you, you your Chrome froze because you said something mean about Chromecast. <laughs> there you go. It knows. It's like, how dare you? But the uh, like, I can see more and more manufacturers going in this direction, and I, I'm hoping that more manufacturers either partner with Apple, Google, or Roku, or they have some kind of more modular piece where I can just plug it more into the TV than having to have an extra box hanging off an HDMI port, etc. I want, I, I'd like to see more built into the TV mm-hmm. um, in a little bit of a better manner than say what Samsung offers with their, a lot of their technology. And, and that's basically it. And that's basically it, right? Like, like let's how, where, when do we get like versions of these that don't, don't suck? Uh, right. and Roku is kind of the first step because they've been doing this on their own for, for so long. Um, I, I kind of with you, you said about kind of a modular thing. Like, I feel like it needs to be upgradable. I, I feel like there needs to be like some platform, like a PC where I can just decide to pop something. That's why I think something like a Chromecast kind of makes more sense, right? It kind of smartened up my TV, which I just bought like a, you know, a cheaper Vizio. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still have all the capabilities from this little thing. Uh, I feel like, you know, OK, I got a Samsung from four years ago. What can you run on that Samsung from four years ago? And how uh, the people that I know that do have like the smart TVs like a Samsung or a Sony are like, well, it works. It's super slow, but it works, you know, which I can say about a first generation Roku. Yeah. And, and that's something I've seen with the Samsungs. I've seen where on the back of the Samsung they now have a little box that's probably about the size of a phone, but probably three phones thick. And it actually is a modular piece that plugs in. Mm. The, th- the place where I think Samsung has a little bit of a, of a rough time is now you have to have developers develop for the Samsung TV, for the Roku, for the Apple TV, for the Chromecast, that kind of thing. But the, the problem that I still go back to with Chromecast where I'd rather have full-fledged Android somehow in the device Mm -hmm. is that I need another device then to really take advantage of Chromecast. And I want something that's kind of a standalone unit. I throw someone a remote and they're good to go. I got a really interesting phenomenon going. I think it's finally catching up, but your video is from like two minutes ago. But my audio is correct. Your video, your audio is fine, but and you're just like sitting there looking at me. Now it kind of like sped up, and I think I finally caught up a little bit. I that's what was happening with with Cynthia earlier, but her video was playing, but there was no audio. Oh man, a Google a Google Hangout. What are you guys doing lately? Well, I just started closing like pretty much everything on yeah, my. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing. Hangout definitely um, is a bit of a CPU burner. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, I've noticed you gotta make sure like it's it's almost topping out like it's like the only thing running on this iMac over here and it's like almost topping it out like I can't run anything else on this well thing. it's the it's the only thing I have running on this other than one two four four tabs in in Chrome probably some flash in there um all right I got one I, I got to share the thing the latest thing I've been addicted to um I'm sure I'm gonna follow I'm sure we're gonna talk about this on on boss battle and, and mayhem show. Uh, there's this game that came out called WWE Supercard, and uh, there's been a few kind of card game apps out there. Uh, this one is, it's kind of, it, we have a giant thread on the Wrestling Mayhem Show group of everybody's configuration and cards. Um, they were going after, I guess there's one of the popular games is Hearthstone. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that one. Um, but it's basically taking that concept and adding wrestlers to it. Now it's pretty cool in presentation because your re- your your cards actually come down the ramp like the re- like the wrestlers do. Here, I'll pull up a video here, like in 3D, and then the cards actually do wrestle each other. I mean, it's kind of predetermined that you know whatever your stats ma- uh, match up, like if it's uh, match based on toughness or charisma, like that's how you decide you're going to win and you can add another card uh in certain circumstances and you see like one card just body slammed the other one and it exploded Um, does it kind of tilt them like three-dimensionally yeah yeah very 2d uh no it's very 3d actually like the the cards are moving in 3d and one like will pick one up and you know you know so you know uh make it look like wrestling moves and everything um and uh it came out thursday and i think everybody in the wrestling circles are just on it completely addicted and already like this new this new uh company that took over the wwe games has just hooked everybody um so if you want to check that out it's a freemium kind of thing although it really doesn't feel like like it doesn't bother you to buy things you know it shouldn't no no <laughs> uh, but but it's one of those if you, i want to just go and kick butt and get some higher end cards because you go up and it's got common cards uncommon rare super rare and, and and it goes up from there legendary you know there's 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 several tiers as you go up and there are more powerful cards and there are more powerful versions you can combine cards to turn them into a pro version and, and upgrade the stats. You can, I like calling it feeding the cards to another one, but they call it training where you take a card and it just like gets absorbed by another card and it ups their stats. Um, so, and, and a nice uh, range of like old wrestlers and new wrestlers too. So I'll have to check it out. I, I really like the star Wars card game. I, I play that a lot. I'd like to hear a comparison to that. Now I've experimented with the transformers one. I have uh, not played that. Transformers Legends, I think it's called. It's very it's very similar, but like again, that was the first cuz cuz when I think a card game, like if you're playing like the Pokemon card game, like I thought mm-hmm. like you're actually putting out a card, like I felt like there should be more activity. The fact that you like you have your deck and then you just pit it against another deck and it lets you know if you won, like felt a little like really? Like it felt like there's nothing to it. Right, and that that kept me. Other than like it was cool, it was old school, old school Transformers. Um, that kept me out of like kind of really getting enveloped in that in that version of it. Um, but I don't know something with this presentation. Like it's not just you know, hey, here's this card, here's a card of what what your opponent has. It, like this whole like wrestling presentation really kind of works here, um, and just has hooked everybody. It's it's great. So awesome. So uh, with that, that's kind of our app. <laughs> well, I guess we got a couple apps of the week, so uh, that works out really well. Um, again, I want to throw a shout out to Slice on Broadway. They uh, have been supporting the show uh, and those that come by the studio. Though there's not many today, Chilla, we've missed you. <laughs> and so is Slice, of course. I'll make sure I order a, a pie from them. <laughs> to make up for Or two. On one of your babysitting nights, right? Yes. Or child watching nights uh, but now if you're in the south hills of pittsburgh go check them out they're right here down the tracks uh great pizza great you can get it by the slice uh, it i feel like i'm in a neighborhood that has a pizza place and a coffee shop like i feel like i feel like stuff's happening around here and uh it's great to support them they got a new location out in, out in carnegie um i know uh doug uh father spoon should i drink that that's been on the show before uh he says it's very dangerous because one over in carnegie is right next to a uh an alehouse i think 
So uh, he's going to be spending a, a good bit of time over there. So please check them out. They're on Facebook. They're on uh, the Twitters. And you can get all that from SliceOnBroadway.com. Um, and if, you, if you're in the South Hills, you check them out. Make sure you heard about them on the Awesome Cast. So. So a lot's happened in social media this last week. Um, let's let's do the positive story first. Just just we'll, we'll do Ferguson later. Um, so I don't even know when this started. Like this started like mid last week. This ice bucket challenge. Like, does anybody know? Like, when when did you guys hear about it? Hmm. I know it was at least last week, and I want to say it was maybe even the week before. Mm-hmm. I think it might have been the week before. At least, at least on my like Facebook feeds, I want to say it started the the week before last. So, so almost two weeks ago. So this was a campaign. I, again, I'm not entirely sure the origin of it, uh, but it you know it's a uh, hashtag hashtag uh, ice bucket challenge hashtag strikeout ALS. Uh, so it is an awareness for ALS, Lou, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, and it's something that I know we've done uh, some work with uh, with the Unsung series. Um, because uh, uh, Chris Chris uh, Will actually was a producer on the show with the Pittsburgh Foundation. Actually, uh, at least his his, uh, his mother uh, was uh, diagnosed with ALS, um, and it's a uh, it's a very uh, it's a very difficult disease for sure. Um, for those who don't know, because I, I have this this is why I think this is so great. Like I, I, at first, I'm a little iffy on this because I felt like a lot of people are doing the challenge. But, like, I didn't know until after I did my video, it was you dump a bucket on your head or you donate to the cause. Like, the information wasn't transferring. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but but either way, the, the, the foundation, uh, uh, you know, trying to find a cure for ALS uh, is reporting record uh, donations out of this. Um, did, well, did you see what, and I don't know if you've ever watched uh, What Not to Wear or The Chew. Um, uh, who's the guy on there? I can't remember. Anyway, he actually did something where he got challenged and he was on a flight or something like that and actually responded to it saying that if you do the ice bucket challenge and mention, I think someone related to him, uh, Aunt Irma or somebody or a friend of his uh, passed away from ALS, mm-hmm. um, if you mentioned her name and tagged him, for every other person that did that, he would donate an additional $50. That's awesome. So a lot of people were jumping in and, and, and not just taking to the point where your, your point of you either did the ice bucket challenge or you paid the money. Mm-hmm. Most of the, the bigger names were doing both. Yes. Yes. And I know Taylor, that. Taylor Swift did something. She had a big, big thing. A lot of the Pittsburgh penguins mm-hmm. were doing it. So like uh, a lot of the feeds I saw, yes, it was one or the other, but I think I think there were a lot of people doing both as mm. well. Uh, for me, I well, I did uh, show that if you were on the video, uh, uh, you know, I have I have my video as challenged by two people actually, um, but I made sure you know when we tweeted out, we we connected because we, we do have a couple of stories about ALS. We had a really good one when we showed like about the technology that 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 helps these people, and, and another one about you know uh, one of the guys that came down with ALS. Um, and, you know, at least trying to educate on top of it and making sure I don't forget the strikeout ALS. Cause frankly, I didn't see the strikeout ALS originally. Um, it was just like, why are we doing this? So why, you know, uh, at least people can follow that through and hopefully find out, find more information. Cause I think this is a disease that a lot, like I didn't know anything about until we started reporting on it with the show. Right. Um, mm-hmm. for those don't know it, 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 it attacks, I, I may get this wrong, the ner- the nervous system and it's, it's pretty much terminal if you're diagnosed with it uh, and it's just a matter of time but as you go you start losing motor functions and that's why when we start looking at the, the technology of it and we, i think we talked about it here on the show uh, a little bit around that time as well um that's why we have things like um um i i controlled mice for computers and and uh voice controlled uh, uh you know objects for 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 computers um you know to make those people still feel like they can you know do something you know even though they're in that kind of you know, lower, you know, uh, breaking down state, um, mm-hmm. and, and just dealing with, with the, with the symptoms. Um, so, and of course, you know, Lou Gehrig was the one, I, I don't, you know, one of the early ones, I guess, made it famous, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, so, uh, you know, great for awareness, really good that it's gotten on everybody's radar. Everybody, I've seen Jimmy Kimmel doing it. Like we said, there was a, 
a great line of uh, Tim Cook, uh, uh, the new guy at, at uh, who's the new guy at Microsoft? Um, geez, excuse me. Uh, and Adela? Yeah, Adela. Um, uh, Bill Gates did a really fun one uh, where he built the contraption that dumped the water on his head. Mm -hmm. uh, built, quote, the contraption. Uh, you know, and a lot of people are having fun with it, and, and it's getting around. So, uh, and I know there's been a lot of complaints of like, well, guys, go donate, you know. Um, but even to those that aren't donating, they're still getting record numbers, and there's still an awareness. So I really think there's no negative that can really come from this. Um, I just watched a video before this. Uh, Missy pu pulled up of Cookie Monster getting dumped. <laughs> so it's weird because, you know, I think Vince McMahon of the WWE challenged Kermit the Frog. That must be what led to that. But anyways, I, I don't know. Have you got, what, what have you guys seen interesting? Uh, Cindy, what have you seen interesting out of the Size Bucket Challenge so far? Well, I'm just curious sort of what, what caused it to hit this... Um uh, critical mass where it, it picked up steam. There was a while on my Facebook feed when basically it seemed like every every tweet, every um, post on there was some sort of a challenge response and people who I would not really have expected. And then you can contrast that with people doing, you know, walkathons and um, other, other ways of raising awareness for other diseases. So what is it that's different about this one? It may be that anyone can do it. It may be the drama of uh, being splashed with water and it's funny so it gets passed <laughs> around more than watching someone trudge down a marathon or a, a walk. I don't, I'm really mm -hmm. kind of curious about it and I'm wondering if it's repeatable in some way. Do you know what I mean? If someone's if someone thinks this is cool, is this is this done now and so we can't do it again or what happens? You know well, what certainly, I, mean? I think the challenge aspect was one of the big uh, components. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're automatically spreading. I mean, it's like those things that you hate on Facebook. Pass this along to 10 of your friends so you have good luck, you right. know, but actually with something effective. Yeah. But, but I feel like, the to your point, anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you get to then challenge a few other people, mm -hmm. that it seems like, okay, splashing water, like you're, to your point, a, a bucket of ice water. Um, and then you can actually then challenge three more people. I could see it. I could see it easily. It's like a giant pyramid scheme, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I get, oh yeah. I get three people and those three people get three people and, and all those people get three people. And it, it can spread really quick. I, I'm surprised at, at how quickly it grew. But I think the one thing is, is that all of the, all of the famous people, like I said, the, I, the first people I saw doing it were mo the majority of the Pittsburgh Penguins mm -hmm. on Facebook. Like they were starting to fill the feed, and and to Cynthia's point, I think by Sunday evening, that that's that was my entire timeline. Because <laughs> everybody had the weekend to do it at that mm -hmm. point, right? Um, because I, you know, it was it was like like somebody challenged. When is they challenge? I think somebody challenged me on Friday, and I'm like, okay, I think I got some time Saturday to do this, and I had a busy Saturday, um, and and I, I just everybody just dumped in there. I mean, it, it, and the, has anybody seen the ice bucket fails? Or the <laughs> I have not seen. I have not seen that, and I saw. I, I, but I saw a couple posts of different. There's different one where posts like they that. got this giant tub. This guy's trying to lift up to dump his buddy, and it just flips over on his head. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Um, the the uh, crazy slow motion uh, Rick Seaback one is, is is something to see. Um, for those who don't know, uh, he's very uh, popular here with uh, the PBS local PBS affiliate. Um, if you get the neighborhood channel, you hear him basically 24 hours, and it's pretty amazing. Um, and, and, and let's say Vince McMahon, Triple H. Well, Brent Roethlisberger actually challenged Triple H as a WWE. Who then, and then and then Vince McMahon tr challenged Kermit the Frog. And it's it's going all over the place. I love it. And, and this is nice. Like even amongst like you know we're seeing in the tech community. You know, uh, uh, you know Tim Cook and challenged by by the guys from Microsoft and back and forth and everything. So there's this camaraderie amongst you know perceived rivals. You know, mm -hmm. um, so that's been really cool. And those those kind of industries kind of get to, to, to play with each other in this way. And it's, it's all for a good cause. And, you know, I know like like uh, I saw a press release from when Stephanie McMahon of the WWE did one, you know, um, some people doing it on Instagram, some people being creative with it. Uh, Doug, Doug Durda had a really good one where his kids helped him out. Um, really good 80s themed. Uh, so go check that out. <laughs> Douglas Durda dot com. He, he has that posted up there. 
Um, it, it's it's pretty fantastic. So I, I think it did. It originated straight from the ALS uh, Association. Uh, I got the page up here. I was showing a little bit of the uh, of the uh, Dave Grohl one. Oh, here's uh, Jeff Bezos challenging <laughs> challenging. Oh wait, uh, and actually, this must be Sulu doing it. It was a uh, 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 George Takai, uh, Patrick Stewart, or William Shatner. He challenged. So he must be a huge Star Trek fan. And uh, Bezos did his on stage at, at a town hall. Yeah, at a, at a company town hall. Um, yeah. Latest news item on their site says that they've uh, donations have reached twenty two point nine million dollars to the ALS Association. So that's awesome. Awesome. So, uh, so if you haven't, uh, I, I don't know how to get in. I, I know like people requesting their friends to challenge them at this point so they can make a video. All right, you like, do you start? Like, can you just be like, hey, I'm doing this and I'm challenging friends? You know, I think um, so. I don't see. Why. I'm sure that's how it had to start originally. Yeah, somebody had to. <laughs> So, um, so you you guys haven't gotten challenged yet? No, I have not. Somebody out there in the audience, if you haven't done yours yet, make sure you get these two. Dutters is already challenged. I'm waiting for her. She's over the 24 hour mark. So, all right, we got some other cool stuff going on. I need to watch that George Takai one later. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's go to, uh, I found a really good replacement. You guys remember Turntable FM? Yes. I tweeted, I think Friday, then I really missed Turntable FM, because one of those days, because there was always, like, uh, if you guys remember amongst, like, our crew, like, there, there was always, like, like, Friday, like, Friday hip hop, flashback Friday hip hop days or something on Turntable you could always jump into while you're working. It was just, like, that kind of day. For mm -hmm. me, where I was just like, I could use some like background music or, or something like that. I just kind of, you know, hark uh, 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 turntable FM was really nice. For those who don't remember it, um, you could jump into a room, uh, up to maybe five or six people could pop up and be the DJs. You pick your next song and it just kind of rounds around. So everybody is picking the playlist and kind of sits in line and then people can get in the room and just kind of uh jam to it and everybody has a little avatar and they could be bumping their head to it as as you gave like likes to the music that was playing or if it got too many thumbs down you, you would just move on to the next song um this actually was the dj the for music at one of the pod camp uh, that's meeting that's where I remember it from and and the, I think the one thing that was that I thought was really cool about it was the fact that you could they not only had a a Spotify type internal list that you could pull from their music mm -hmm. but you could also leverage the music on your device which I thought was was a really nice add to that feature functionality of how it worked so and even like people that weren't even at the party were able to influence because I think we might have had a webcam set up or at least we were tweeting or something uh, uh, from it like my, my, my brother got the uh, Got the uh, 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 scream or, or not scream uh, thriller music going, so the uh, uh, scarehouse bunny and zombie would dance, which unfortunately I think the bunny got hurt that night. Um, but somebody tweeted me, uh, plug DJ is a new one. Um, so can you let us know a little bit about yourself. Uh oh, that was me. Okay, uh, but you get into your plug DJ, you sign up uh, with your Facebook or something, you get a little uh, cool little avatar guy, a little little animal dude um but this one of course the top ones are all like dubstep and 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 uh techno and stuff but it actually uses youtube for its music source which can get a little little bandwidth heavy and again i can woot grab or meh i don't know what grab is oh i can create a playlist from there that's cool um but you woot and my little guys in the front and i get points you know and could get fans and everything pretty much like the other one and uh it's not showing much video up here but sometimes it is more of a music video that's going sometimes you know going on youtube if you look up a certain track sometimes it's just like album cover music right and mm -hmm. i don't know if there's a i don't know if there's anything specific they're pulling from because the videos they do pull up look really good regardless of what it is so um now the when you when it's pulling the view, videos off of off of youtube does it play like the advertisement or and the stuff ahead of time or it does, does it not just... it does not that i've seen okay that's cool so uh so plug.dj and uh I, I i haven't been able to dive into it um i don't i, I don't see 
well, like anytime I pop in here, it says the wait list is full, but I always pick kind of like one of the top ones that are trending. Uh, so they're going to like, you can see there's like a bunch of people in this room. I don't know if I can see a do number. You, do here. you log in with Google, Twitter or Facebook? I honestly can't remember. <laughs> I think do, it was Facebook. It like auto find your friends. Um, they have not gotten into it that far. Uh, okay. Now I'm going to have to play no, with this. Unless I have no friends here. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't think I don't think it's at least in our circles. I don't think it's really around yet. So, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of it, it. Seems like it is kind of early-ish because they're talking about a lot of features that are coming soon. Uh, when I popped into the blog, it looks like uh, they've got a new site. Um, just looking at their news here, it looks like maybe they they're migrating either the bigger, better servers or adding on the new features, whatever it is. So. There's some stuff that's a little bit in turmoil, but it's coming up in a couple of days. Yeah, so. it, it said that like any stat, like you keep getting a warning that like any stats are not going to transfer to the new servers. Mm -hmm. So whatever that is, so I might actually be seeing a stripped down version of this that I've been mm -hmm. playing with all weekend. So, uh, but yeah, check it out, Plug DJ. Fun, uh, fun way to get back in that music, social music kind of idea. So I am on something really weird over here. When I got into those ice bucket challenges, so um, Chilla, well, tell me about this hundred ninety nine dollar laptop, Windows based. So it's a Windows based laptop. Now keep in mind, and I think that's close to the magic number for the vendor not to be charged for the license. Mm. Um, so HP is coming out, and then Microsoft talked about this at one of their last gatherings. Um, it's an HP laptop, fourteen inch. Uh, it's using a low-powered AMD A4 processor, um, two gig of RAM, close a little bit above, pretty much between 720 and 1080 um, resolution. It's 1366 by 768, 32 gig of flash storage, um, and if you purchase the device, they throw in two years of 100 gig. Um, 100 gigs worth of space on one drive. Okay. So for, so for two years, you, you easily got that extra 100 gig on there, aside from the 32 gig of flash storage. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, I, I think this is a good opportunity to, to bring low-end, low-priced laptops into a lot of people's hands. I think you made a really good point below the show, or before the show, um, about, you know, it gets a little dangerous when it's a Windows box versus versus a Chrome a Chrome type device because you're limited on the Chrome device with what you can actually do, whereas you can try to push the Windows platform to do more on a low end device and then become frustrated. Yeah, and I think that's that's the issue because I like I'm thinking about the people that I know will buy the cheapest one. I mean, I've, I've had family members buy like the $300 laptop and don't understand why they need to buy another one within two years, mm -hmm. for instance, just for build quality. Um, and I think that's it. They're like, oh, I can get a Windows machine for this so I can do all the Windows things for 200 bucks. No, not really, guys. You know, uh, if you want to do more, you have to pay more. You know, um, I mean, I'm not happy with a $600 laptop. With, with Windows. Like we were talking before the show, but uh, because this one with the Windows 8, it's sluggish and all I'm running is TweetDeck and, and, and Chrome, you know, which could be a Chrome issue. I don't know if, if I hopped over to Firefox, but all my syncing is through Chrome mm -hmm. uh, for, for all the all the stuff I do. Um, so I cannot, I like, at like what point is this useful? You know what I mean? Like, is this what you get? If you only do the things that you would maybe do on a tablet, I think, this might yeah, be I think it would be like I think it would be your your low end tablet things, or I think if you were just to me, I mean, anything that you would do on a Chromebook, I think it's your basic browsing mm -hmm. plus maybe pretty much anything. Like I look at the way Microsoft's mentality around Office three sixty five, and and maybe not even load Office on actually Office on the device, but but use the web apps. Mm -hmm. I could I could see it being a basic around the house, you need an extra computer. A family needs an extra computer because they only have one or they only, and they have multiple people that are trying to jump on the internet or do this, that, or the other. I think $199 is that, is that price point that the people are going to eat up the devices. Yeah. So to your point, yes, 
probably have to replace them every two years. Mm -hmm. But I, but I think it, 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 it's almost like that one laptop per child or something along those lines where it's, it's, it's getting to the point where you can get these devices in everyone's hands. It's, it's cheaper than, than most cell phones. Also probably nice for, we've talked about like Chrome as being like kind of deployed on a business side. Mm -hmm. uh, also probably nice for, for businesses that like that idea, but didn't want to get away, away from their windows and their office idea. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you think, Cindy? I see you're nodding your head over there. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing that it, uh, particularly when you compare it to the price of a smartphone or something, I can think of, you know, families with kids where they have um, iPads for the kids to make little games and just keep occupied. Um, and so it, it kind of fits that same, that same image. And for a company that wants to have control over the devices and doesn't want to do a bring your own device type thing, and is going to deploy all their apps centrally anyway, it makes a, it makes a lot of sense. What I'm finding out, so I just I just bought myself a new MacBook Pro, and so it's got a solid state hard drive, and I'm that is a big change for me. Mm -hmm. I'm used to just um, hoarding files from decades ago, um, and then bringing them from computer to computer, and I couldn't do that. This is the first time I couldn't just say, "Oh, sure, just dump it on here." And so now I'm sort of having to come up with this whole strategy for how do my files, where do my files live, how do I archive them, and things. And if you're a big company and you've been struggling with that, or even a small company with a couple of people, you have to have a solution. And maybe just saying, look, nobody gets to keep their files locally. Everything has to be central. This will work with that. You know? Yeah, it I'm could reminded. definitely push people to the cloud. Yeah. I'm reminded that when, when, when PCs first came into being, you know, way back in the day when I first started in the business world, um, where everything was servers and, and you had dumb terminals on the desk, desktop and then it was sort of exciting to see small PCs kind of sneak their way into offices. People were all excited to use their Windows computer or their Mac computer at work. And and over time that became the norm. Like the cheapy stuff became good. And it almost feels like we're going through that same cycle again. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Um, Chili, you got something here about Google and uh, iOS. So Google released yet another app for iOS, They're, they brought their their Photosphere app, which is a nice panoram panoramic uh, camera, which app. Has, which has been a look at what, a very look what my Android phone can do kind mm -hmm. of thing. I've noticed. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's fine. Whatever, you know. But it brings that 360 degree photography to the iPhone, which I I, I think is pretty cool, especially when you you, you would see on the iPhone companies that had to make special mirror devices that would kind of kind of leverage this in a special app this brings that to the iPhone all from Google within an app and I think uh, and I've never used the app before I actually downloaded it and have yet to, to play with it but you can use it in geotag and your friends can see it on Google Maps as well you know interesting um <laughs> One of my relatives, uh, one time at like Thanksgiving or something, actually, because actually when you when I typed in Photospear, first thing came up was oh no, Tiny Plants, the first thing that came up. And we remember Cindy was here the last time we played with that one. I thought it was something else. Um, but there's been plenty of Photospear apps. Bubbly is the other one. They think like my relatives know somebody that developed it or something. Um, but again, I, I don't think anything like this is going to take off unless you get something like Google where you can do the tagging like you're mentioning, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, that down well, I wonder if this is going to, I wonder if this is going to help. I mean, Google's always been trying to do the indoor, the indoor stuff for street view. I wonder if this will help bring some of that, some of that 3d in your house, around your house type view to street view. Because I think right now you actually have to have Google come in and do the indoor stuff, don't you? It's not Google, but it's somebody has to be certified. Yeah, every some video guy has to be certified and come and do oh, it. Oh, this is that's it. Really this is the cool. first thing I thought of. Like what, um, just what you just described. Because for businesses that are trying to put interesting content online and do video tours, this is an interesting alternative. That's very cool. So I'm actually doing one right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it's interesting because like you take your picture and you go to the edge and there's a circle that pops up and you have to like line it up. Mm -hmm. 
I'll try to do like part of one here. And I guess if you go up, it'll tell you where the circle is there, and it'll start connecting it. Oh, that's getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's really kind of clever, it seems. Let me see if I can save what I've done. And there's a little there's a little guy that runs across your screen and he's doing something. I'd like Set to see some creative ones where people like move around in the picture to be in the panorama more than once. <laughs> it's, so, like, it's like there would be a bunch of clones of you all around the room. Oh, that so that would be kind of cool. So it publish do I really want this to do I really want to publish the Google Maps that I have all this equipment in the basement of my house? <laughs> That's no, but I, you, pr only, you probably don't want to do that. But I, I think the Cindy's point is now anybody has the tool in their hand to be able to publish this kind of stuff to bring. If if you were if you were a vendor of some sort or had a shop on the street level, I, I think this could get people to come into your shop. Certainly. Yeah, real charming coffee shop that's historic here in Butler. We wanted to do a video thing sometime back, and this is exactly what I wanted. To show. I this this is it. Um, I, you know, I I don't know if this is going to be has the ability for you to do the walkthrough thing, um, but certainly if you're just like a little coffee shop, like you said, a little you know a little shop like that, you can do this very easily. And uh, I, I'm looking at just a little bit. I did really stitch together well. It's fairly seamless. Even with all the moving, I see myself taking the picture on the monitor. Um, I want to figure out a way to publish this so it's not on Google Maps for one thing. Um, but that could be fun. Maybe if I maybe I could delete it afterwards. Or could you could you save it to like Google Plus and only people that were friends or in a specific circle could see it? That's what I'm wondering. It um, it, like I click on it and all all it says is publish to Google Maps. Yeah. Oh heck, why not? Why not? We'll see where this goes. I'm doing this for the sake of science here. Uh, publishing publicly as a web on the web as Michael Sorg. The location and day of this photo spear will be displayed publicly. Published. Well, I at least have something to show you guys. <laughs> and you can see my uh, Undertaker mask in the corner. Um, so how do I get to it? Do I just look up my address? I guess. This is sounding like a better and better ever idea every time. <laughs> Well, there's that. Well, it's old... interesting because how many how many places now are you going to go on Google Maps and see tons of these 360 degree? Right, right. Well, I can search nearby. It's not popping it up just yet. I don't know, but I don't really understand how how I get to it. Like mm -hmm. how, how I, like what's the next step for me? You know, it's, it's making me publish these things, but and then, you know, do you have something in your yes. Gmail with a link or something? Oh, yeah. Let me check my Gmail. Let me check my plus while I'm at it. It would be fun to do this. It would be interesting to use this also for real estate. You mm -hmm. know, to show up the inside of a building that's for sale. If I was thinking apartment rentals. Yeah, yeah. Airbnb. Yeah, for any of that stuff. Certainly. Um, no, I don't see anything here in the Google Pluses. I don't see anybody in the... I know, and maybe it's not instant. I mean, I know oh, this is... Oh, here we go. Uh, welcome to Views. Oh, Welcome to Views, a Google Map uh, photography community. Happy exploring, or exploring my own house, I guess. I can view my profile. Oh, there we go. Now I can show it off. And if you go in here, there is the studio. And there's Missy on the couch. That's not that you guys can see it with the setup, sorry, uh, but they got it on video. Uh, that's pretty cool. So you do get like kind of a a dashboard here. We can go in here and you can connect images to navigate. Um, oh, so I, I, I'm guessing I can do the other side of this place and then I can maybe stitch it up because it is definitely using the compass. So mm -hmm. like you mentioned about like kind of being creative and like like doing part of one and then maybe moving and doing another part. I think it knows. But if you could have someone else do it and take take it where you're on the couch and then you're in your chair and then you're standing oh, against okay. the wall. Okay. You can do that with panoramas now too, though. Mm -hmm. So I think we've done, we've done that a little bit. Um, yeah, because we do one where I'd start. I, I think I maybe had Chachi with me. I, I'd start with it. And I tell him that as I'm going to get on, get on go behind me and go on the other side so he's there too. So... 
That's awesome. So that's um uh Photosphere. Photosphere. Make sure you get the Google one. Um, it's the one with the more kind of blue and white icon that's out there. So it doesn't look very googly. I, I guess look at. I mean, think about what you could do with your with your stuff that you're doing on the weekends. And I don't know. I think it, I think it'd be kind of cool to as you go around and. Ooh, I got a steel cage match we're filming this weekend. Post all that kind of stuff. Yes. Like if, you, if you stand inside the steel cage and, and get a decent 360 of that, it's. And see, this it's is what it's cool. like to stand in a steel cage in Elizabeth. <laughs> That'll be awesome. That'll be awesome. Um, all right, uh, let's uh, let's touch on you know the other big topic for the week here. Um, you know, what is the cat messing with you? That's weird. The cat is being very weird tonight. Um, so Ferguson's been happening over this last week, uh, and I'm pretty sure everybody knows. I got caught up with uh, some of the news this week. Uh, and always when there's something like this, uh, you know, uh, like Cindy, I think you were on when we talked about the G20 when I was in town. And there was a lot of uh, drama over that and a lot of protests. Uh, social media really kind of stands out at this point. Um, and, uh, it, and it certainly has in this case, too. Uh, there's been uh, definitely protests. There's been questions, uh, apparently, of one, the, the uh, uh, shooting of a, of a, a suspect uh in the first place, and then also the where do the, where did our um, our police forces get all these wonderful military toys um, has also come into question over the last week. Uh, but but through it all, it's all been reported on the ground in very interesting ways. Um, I, I know you guys have probably seen some of this over the last week. I kind of got into it late, like I wasn't like I knew something was happening as I was kind of going about my week myself, um, but I didn't realize it was something uh, so big. Uh, until several days into it, actually. So I, what have you guys been noticing uh, that's kind of surprised you out of the situation? It's been amazing to see. I mean, just you can, you're you seeing things like um, journalists being taken, um, uh, being, being taken to jail, and, then, and so they're taken out of circulation, but then other people, like the population is filling in, if you will. So we're a mainstream... Journalism is is either choosing not to cover it in the same way, or is being prevented from covering it. Mm -hmm. they, um, the um, the citizenship is able to kind of fill in the gaps. It, it's it's astonishing to watch it, and it's been sort of interesting to see, you know, the United States react, and then the rest of the world kind of react too. So there's two pieces of this. One is that we're seeing what's going on, and then we are immediately understanding how the rest of the world is looking at us and how we are looking at ourselves, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I mean, cool and cool in an abstract, I still wish it weren't happening kind of a way. You know? yeah. the, the one thing that worries me, and, and we, saw, we saw it happen in, with Boston and with the marathon and things of that nature, is misinformation being not being validated, being taken word for word, and then it, it's not until hours later. And I don't have a for instance out of out of this exact use case, but it, but it does worry me when you when you get into the social media, anybody has 140 characters to say what they want, and then it can be just taken from there. And it it just it's, it's almost like anything you read on the internet is true because because it was on the internet exactly. Yeah, that, that's the only thing that worries me. I, I've definitely seen some very disturbing posts uh, just on Facebook over the last couple of days in, in connection to this, for sure. And I'm showing some pictures. If you guys are on video, some of the pictures are coming up from this. Um, uh, for once, the, the the wonderful old lady that I was just showing is apparently a, a protester that got arrested, for instance, right? Um, said like a Holocaust survivor. I don't know which photo you're talking about, but the one who's been most featured is herself a survivor. Um, oh jeez! Oh jeez! Um, and uh, another one. I actually got in a conversation with this uh, a few nights ago. Uh, Twitter co-founder and also one of the founders of Square, Jack Dorsey, uh, uh, went down to protest uh, over the weekend. Uh, you know, if anybody you know is connected with the social media aspect of this is, is somebody like that. Uh, he's apparently a native of the area, uh, I believe. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's showing some pretty big support there. So, but what's interesting to me also that sort of the counterpoint to this is that, um, in, there's a community in California and I'm sorry, I'm not able to think of the name of it, but I can look it up where police 
um, now like have a camera that records all the things that they do and all their interactions. And in that community, um, use of force has dropped very dramatically without there being this sudden increase in crime. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of feel like this is related to that in some way too, that greater trans that the tools and things that we have now provide the opportunity for more transparency that also could be, you know, to John's point, could be um, validated and saying, look, this is what really happened. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if a community would embrace that as opposed to just bigger and better guns, I think that that would be a nicer, um, a more effective way to have a community that trusts itself, you know? And we're also seeing uh, certainly uh, kind of the response to that too. Like when we talk about the community has the cameras, can we can see what's happening, you know, when, you know, uh, I think there's some cameras were around when uh, the police start raiding the McDonald's where all the, all the press were camped out at. Um, and, but then they were some people arrested for not putting their camera away, which I pretty sure the Supreme court, just came out and said that they can't do that anymore. Um, there's definitely a disconnect here, and and we're getting some eyes on the ground on what's happening there. And uh, hopefully this thing... Uh, I don't want to get into politics of this thing, but hopefully this thing uh, gets better before it gets worse uh, from both ends. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting if you had something like, like a Google Glass where you could actually follow someone throughout their day or throughout, if you have one of these impromptu journalist type people mm -hmm. and you had a technology like a Google Glass where it wasn't just video that was recorded and then posted and, and snippets and, and whatnot, if it was actually a, a, a live feed kind of thing. And I actually, that actually occurred during, it was during G20, there were a lot of people using, they were actually the protesters were using the apps on their phone that were the police scanners and they were using it to, f to make sure that they weren't where the Pittsburgh police and, and affiliate police departments that came into Pittsburgh during G20. So I guess it's kind of a double edged sword, but it does give you kind of a live what's going on right at, a, at any given moment. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Um, and, and, you know, as far as, like, uh, kind of the stream side, there's other, um, I think we've talked about them on the show, like, these little camera things that you would actually wear, like, kind of more on your chest. Yeah, and it kind of takes, a, it, it, those are the ones that take a, take a photo, uh, okay. like, every 30 seconds or something that, like that. that. Probably, like a journal type, type thing. Yeah, that'd probably be a little less effective. Well, maybe a little bit. Maybe a well, little bit. But uh, not, not, that's the way I think we're thinking, where we want to catch because the problem is whenever we do see video of something firsthand something has already happened to spur somebody to hit record right mm -hmm. so we never see the initial issue um yeah, what was the catalyst to make them exactly we see uh the, 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 wasn't there one recently uh, that you know geez i can't remember it was a, a concert or something or some protest or something oh it, it was some kind of protest it might be in the city oh it was actually was in the city where uh, the one lady got like like bashed up against a car and, and arrested, like like for seemingly doing nothing, and like picked up by her hair, right? It was we a, don't. Uh, I think it was a uh, LBG. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna get all. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was like like a, a gay pro a gay support yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. Um. That, that that they got involved with with the, with the prop eight or whatever that 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 was happening. Yeah, down that's California. Uh, but the equivalent thing here in Pennsylvania, the Supreme the, uh, the Supreme Court ruling for gay marriage. I think was the, mm -hmm. was the thing. Um, what we don't know if the girl was mouthing off. That obviously he acted out, you know. But we don't know if something instigated that in advance, you know, um, because somebody had record at that moment after something was already happening. Um, and and I, I do worry about you know maybe that's a lot of the stuff we're seeing out of this. We're seeing that's so terrible, you know. But what led to it? So, well, look at how they use the dashboard cameras in Russia. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Everybody has a dashboard camera, and that that gets that video before. Well, whatever would normally make you turn on your camera, to your point, it's already going to be recorded. So, so, to the point I was trying to say before, I found the citation and I've added the spreadsheet there. Um, so, this is an, the article is saying that um, in 2012 in uh, in Rialto, in San Bernardino County, they've outfitted all the police officers with body cams that they wear at all times and record at all working hours. So that's pretty interesting. And so the um, number of complaints filed against the police dropped 88% and use of force dropped 59%. 
So both the police officer and the people knowing that they're being recorded automatically, uh, everybody's acting like they ought to. Isn't that interesting? Well, it- everybody acts like that ought to if they know they have a security <laughs> camera on them at all times. Uh, they put a security camera in our office so that our manager in Harrisburg could see what we were up to at our editing desks. And and we definitely acted a little bit differently, you know, just because we knew somebody could be watching. You know, uh, don't they act a little bit differently when they know the cameras are in every corner in, in, in London, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's it's helpful, but I think there's a little bit of a scare worry tactic on there you know well, okay but it's also maybe a protection you know i True. mean like you said it, everything then is going to be in context it's going to be captured this this article is suggesting that 900 dollars per device is a lot when you talk about a big thing but when you look at lawsuits when you look at crime i mean i don't i don't think that cost is too high at all no no certainly not and, and they were experimenting with uh, uh things like google glass uh some departments uh, i think in new york city actually so uh, they could maybe do, do something similar with that, maybe a little more retrofitted. I, I feel like those things are too light to take any abuse or, or yeah, I'd, on a daily I'd, basis. Yeah, I would think they would need something that's like Google Glass inside of an otter box. Yeah, exactly, with a giant battery pack, right? Yeah, <laughs> um, built, into a, built into a helmet. So, but it'll be very interesting to see what's going on with Ferguson. Uh, uh, I, I'm just sitting here on Twitter and just watching the tweets roll out. You know, uh, reactions to things that are happening on CNN, reactions to things that are happening down there. Uh, somebody said the Fresh Prince warned us about Ferguson. Okay. Um, pictures popping up uh, from from uh, uh, people being arrested. So uh, it's still going, and it's probably not going to end anytime soon for most of the things. They've been going a week. Jeez. But all right, let's. Okay, here's the other sad news. Not as sad as that. I don't know. Maybe we should have done this before. Um, so Facebook is changing things, and so is Twitter. Uh, uh, first, Cindy, let me uh, let me know what Facebook's doing lately. Well, so Facebook's been. Uh, you know, we're all asking questions about what does liking stuff on Facebook do to our use of Facebook, um, and different people lately have been doing their own little you know, non-scientific studies of liking everything on Facebook and seeing what that does and not liking anything and seeing what that does. But So already it's kind of weird there. But apparently now Facebook has made a decision that it's not going to allow, if you have a page, so far in the past you've been able to say you can't, you know, use this app or be a part of our contest or whatever it is without until you like our page. So they call that fan gating or like gating. And Facebook has now said that, that it will be illegal as of November 5th. So we have until wow. then to get everybody signed up on our Facebook pages. Run all your contests now, I guess. Yeah, run um, contests. After that, um, you won't be able to. And their reasoning is that it's not, you know, they want people to be authentically liking and not liking things, which I think is just the silliest argument in the world, as though liking or not liking anything is authentic or inauthentic, you know? So, so I mean, my issue with them is, is the idea that they've effectively neutered fan pages over the last year. Absolutely. Where, yeah, I mean, the, the word was always like, hey, you can go on Facebook and you can talk on there and you can talk with your audience. And, and if they if they like you, they'll follow you. And we kind of knew we don't get everything on the news feed. Um, now it's like less, <laughs> you know, and, and, and these experiments are kind of showing exactly how that happens. Like I'm noticing I must have liked something or clicked on something because I'm getting a lot of kind of buzzfeedy kind of articles popping up a lot now. Um, and I did not get that two months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and in and, and an article last week about the guy that liked everything that came up in his newsfeed and it turned into all content and not any of his friends anymore, uh, for instance, that that kind of makes me wonder. And, and I know like as somebody that operates a fan page, like it's, you know, now saying, you know, hey, um, so we did all this stuff so all these people could follow you. Now we actually have to pay so they can see it. You know, um, and that's a lot more expensive than it used to be when they first said, you know, hey, advertise this post. It was like, ah, oh, five bucks and, you know, you can throw it out there. Now it like starts at 40, you know, um, so it's, a, it's definitely a bigger consideration, especially with some of these smaller organizations and smaller companies. That's kind of a hard pill to swallow. We'll just watch Facebook will start something where if you want these, if, if you want an ad free feed, pay us five dollars a month. Mm hmm. And and they'll be actually getting people to subscribe to get rid of the advertising. It'll be like the old school cable TV. 
<laughs> so cable cable TV came around to pay for the broadcast because they weren't using advertising, and then slowly but surely, advertising snuck in to all the the, the pay TV, except for a couple premium channels, and and, and it pretty much got rid of the whole purpose of broadcast versus cable. Mm-hmm. And the whole uh, idea, like there, there was actually like I we we've had like friends that have, like something bad happened in their life, and we didn't know, and we didn't know we weren't on speaking terms with them because. <laughs> they thought that we weren't around when something happened. And they're like, well, well, I, I, I talked about it on Facebook. And I'm just like, and this is before they started doing this stuff. So like face, if just because I put it on Facebook doesn't mean everybody's going to see it. Right. It, it, and that really kills. Then I kind of say, why am I, on, what am I doing on Facebook? Cause if I'm not, and maybe most people aren't aware of this pro likely most people are not aware of this but i i I feel like is my stuff just kind of going out in a vacuum at least twitter i know i'm shooting it out and it's dropping down somebody's timeline like i know exactly what's happening there without fail right and hopefully somebody sees that little you know flick out into the twitter stream and retweets it and it it grows it grows but smaller chance there um and and then we lost cindy (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, was gonna, I was wondering, was it just me or? Uh, oh, I got a message on, from her on Twitter uh, that says that her Wi-Fi died. She blames Facebook. <laughs> they know we're talking about. They know what's going on. Uh, yeah, I, but I, I like I like the point that you make about at least on Twitter, you know, it's it's trickling down someone's feed because the feed isn't curated. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm interested, and in, and no one's ever gonna to give you the, the secret to the saucer or, or how the sausage is made. But I'm interested to know or give us at least a roundabout idea on how Facebook decides to curate a feed and why can't, much like on Twitter, why can't I create a group or something where I can get this subset of people's I, I'm definitely going to get these people in my feed. I think there are lists. You can do lists, so but, but they're not list, very good. But it's still or, or a group. If it, like I know that if I go to the Wrestling Mayhem show group, the Rambling Mango Minute, yeah, Rambling Mango, whatever that show is we do, uh, you get to those groups, and I'm going to see everything in that group. Right. That will also filter to my news feed as well. So, so it's a granular thing, I guess. Um, but still, most people live and die by that news feed and don't really explore. You know, right. I, I have, I have, you know, I, I, I struggle with the idea. Do I, do I, um, uh, multi post about podcasts through the week? Cause then people are going to come to my awesome cast page, just see the same post over and over with maybe a little text different at the beginning. Uh, but I think about it, nobody goes to that page, right? Right. I, I look for, I actually look for nine times out of 10, I'm looking for something in my feed and no matter who you are or, or what, what you're offering. I, I rarely do I make a mental note to run around and visit a ton of different. No, then different it turns groups. into the web. Right. <laughs> it yeah, turns I, into, yeah. I got to well, visit all those websites. On my Facebook or my, my web uh, list rotation that I go through every night to, to read a bunch of information. But I, I actually, at one point in time when they introduced it, I used like the favorite feature where you could, Make sure you got notified when someone posted, but then it. But when you did that on the website, it then actually started sending um, notifications to my phone, mm-hmm. and I'm like, "Yeah, no." <laughs> yeah, I, I added like ten ridiculous. people. I added like ten people, then I started whittling that down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it's only like like my mom and my sister, maybe a couple other people that don't post much, or mm-hmm. I know every time my mom posts a dog photo. You know, uh, but that, you know, that's about it. Uh, or some people that don't post at all. Now, now the Twitter thing is interesting because an article came up here in the last uh, 24 hours, came across this one. Um, they're actually experimenting. And now I've noticed this on my, I've noticed uh, if you're using the Twitter app on the phone. Mm-hmm. Um, here, I want to send another call to Cindy in case she's back on. Just make sure she's got an invite. Uh, but if you're on the phone, you notice, have you been noticing if you have the notifications set up? Um, it, you'll get something like, hey, such and such, such and such, and such and such are talking about Monday Night Raw. Or, yeah, I do notice or that. Or these people follow this person. 
Yes. So you're getting recommendations and they're feeding out. It's more than just, we saw this first with the Discover tab and it will just filter things based on what you're seeing. I've been trying to pay more attention to trends. And then I realized the trends I'm looking at, depending on where I'm looking at them, are completely different because they're trends for me. And I'm like, man, why is why is the wrestling stuff trending every freaking day on my thing? <laughs> oh, that's right. Because it's for that, you. That's right, because it's for me. Versus, because I'm trying to find other trends to, you know, piggyback on for, for some of my other clients or projects. Cindy's back. Her, her Wi-Fi is now trending. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we just kept going with the conversation here. Good. So. good, good, good. Sorry about that. Um, but we're actually moving on to the Twitter thing about how how you know it's tailoring a bit to you, but that 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 stream, we know what we're getting when we st- you know, we'll put content out to that stream, but we're not sure what's going. I'm not sure where we lost you. We're not sure when we're on a fan page because nobody goes to the fan page anymore, right? The, the idea is you're trying to interject your message, your company, your whatever into their newsfeed somehow. But my problem is who gets the first thing to get liked? You know, mm-hmm. to, to, to kind of get that ball rolling. So, well, and I think you had said earlier, maybe, or maybe you said this while I was offline, what gets dropped from that, from the stream of conversations to make room for these new things or, mm-hmm. or, or does everything just go in there and you just skim it? If we're just skimming, it's not as bad, but if, they're going to do the Facebook thing and rearrange and move things down. That's way worse. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now Twitter is apparently um, on top of stuff. We were talking about how they tell you when, when, you know, a bunch of people have followed a certain per, uh, account or, or are talking about a certain subject. Um, it's come out that it seems that they're experimenting with things that you've favorited becoming visible to other people. Um, it seems like it, it feels in in reading this article, and if I can pull up the right one here, um, that it's kind of akin to, like I see on Facebook, uh, such and such uh, liked this post, so you're going to see it. You know? Or like this group, or like this person, so you're going to see a post from it. Um, I'm kind of okay with that, as long as you don't take away the rest of my timeline. Like, you can add to it, Twitter. That's cool. But don't take away from my timeline is my timeline. And if they start subtracting from that timeline and I still don't see everybody's tweet, I don't see every one of Chachi says complaining about his workday tweets. I have a problem. But I mean, what's what's the point of having uh, both uh, favoriting and retweets if they're both turning into retweets? You know, exactly. if I wanted to retweet something, I would retweet it. If mm-hmm. I wanted everybody else to see it. I would I would retweet it or quote it. I'm favoring it because I I don't choose to do that or I'm choosing to do both, but I'm doing it for some other reason, either to keep track of it for myself or just to kind of give some feedback to the person that did it. So why blend those two motivations? I think that's a mistake. I think you're, but, but aren't you kind of getting that with Facebook too? Uh, well, that's the worst I, thing on Facebook. Is that not the worst thing on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think there's worse things on Facebook. Actually, <laughs> I think I think some of these ads are kind of pretty bad. Uh, uh, the 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 um, liking a post and then here's some more news stories similar to this post. You know, I like I I, I was looking at uh, the Shazam Rock. Uh, rumor article that came up on Facebook and then automatically I got like uh, here's uh, the introduction from the 1957 Shazam show and here's another article and here's another article and then like and then that happens then in my in my Facebook group too for wrestling and then I I should know better but I forget I'm not in the in the group anymore you know and, and you kind of rabbit hole which is exactly, exactly what they want to do all advertising is supposed to be trickery right no. Or at least that, well, that's how a lot of them do it. <laughs> no, that's okay. Maybe okay. Maybe not supposed to be, but that's kind no. of what it, it ends up boiling down to. Unfortunately, everybody gives advertising a bad name. Advertising <laughs> can be fine. Is the person who sells advertising for a living? Advertising it, could be the uh, ice bucket challenge, <laughs> for instance. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's a kind of advertising. Certainly, it is. If ad- and ad- ads are great if you're looking for them. I mean, if I'm in the market for a camera, then show me a bunch of camera ads and let me look at them and review them. Then ads are great, you know? So it's not that advertising is bad. It's being shown at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. It makes me think of, you know, there's a saying in gardening that a weed is just a plant that's out of place. And I feel like an ad is just content that's out of place. A bad and, ad. And, but I think you bring up a really good point there is, is that 
at a, at a given time or, or you're looking for it at a specific time. And I don't think, I think that's an issue that no one has cracked yet and I'm waiting for Amazon to crack it. Why am I getting advertisements for a camera? Well, I'm getting them because I was looking for cameras, but I bought a camera off of your site so quit giving me more advertisements because i don't need two cameras (laughs) so there's like there's a context problem like i'm not i'm not a buyer of a photography army of wedding (laughs) photographers providing services stop showing me more and the no. other thing is, yeah, the, the, the subsequent ads are only going to give you that buyer's remorse, and it's going to make you sad with the camera you bought. You right. Mm-hmm. So, so I, I think a key to it being it's at a specific time that you're looking for something. But, but then back to the whole Facebook thing, there, there should be a way. And, and here's a, here's a, here's an app for you. Build an app that goes out to all that has access to your friends list and then just aggregates its own timeline. Hmm. Hmm. Because you could do that with it. If you built, you have an app and you authenticate with Facebook, you then have access to the friends list. You could then spider the friends list and grab the time and date of all the posts and then reform them in an actual feed without a bunch of garbage. I wish there was a way that Facebook should have it built in where even if I have to go into a sub menu, like I not, like I now have to, to get a timeline view versus whatever order Facebook thinks I should view it in. Mm-hmm. Just give me, make it a maximum of five people per group or whatever. I want to be able to see in full. Or isn't these people, isn't the, isn't the, in the long run, aren't lists what we're looking for here, which is something they provide. I, isn't that the argument of like, Hey, Go away from the home page of Facebook, and you'll you won't get as upset. Uh, I just the just as a uh, hunch, I, I would try to find my close friends, which they buried by the way. That used to be at the top of the page. Uh, but I went to my close friends, which is uh, my sister, my nephew, my mother, my wife, and my father, and my brother, and that's all I seem to get. You know. Uh, and it looks like it's straight up. It looks like what everybody's posted. It's also what everybody liked and commented on, too. That's where it gets kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, it's everything that they've had any activity on, you know. Um, and isn't that what you want in the long run? Mm-hmm. Now, again, yes, the likes are not a little quiet, you know, hey, good job. It's everybody I know. Hey, guys, this guy did a good job over here is what's <laughs> kind of turned into. <laughs> So, um, like Missy, like Jim Locase thing about, uh, kids, I'm coming home tomorrow, you know? Uh, and now I see it on, on the feed where it's just stuff that's supposed to be my family. There's Jim Loke, you know, uh, that's from yesterday. Apparently, if you're looking at me confused, <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm wondering if there's any granular stuff in here too. Suggested my brother's not on this list. We're fixing that. Um, anyways, on that point, oh, any, any last thoughts about that? Uh, Twitter changes. Twitter's going to change, guys. Twitter's going to change. No. They're figuring out how to make money. They're always going to be improving until the next guy that does one simple task, and then if they succeed, they will start adding on. This is this is how everything goes. Is, is there anything like a Twitter Facebook thing that just stayed on that one path and never grew? You know, other than small app developers, maybe, you know, Instagram added video. That's probably the simplest example I can think of. Vine, but I don't, I don't consider it a success. Yeah, Vine's, Vine's a little rough. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Instagram kind of ate, it, ate its lunch when it, uh, it started doing video. So it's like, there's already a, a community there, you know. Mm-hmm. So. All right, guys, on that point, we got to wrap up. For everybody uh, talking video games, if you're uh, on here live, if you want to check it out, uh, Boss Battle over at InsertCoinToBegin.com. That'll be posted here by Wednesday. Uh, w- former WWE wrestler Zach Gowan is actually joining us on that to talk video games. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, Chilla, he's at Chilla on the Twitters. That's where I'm at. Now I'm going in. Thanks. Now I'm going to have to go in and curate a ton of lists on Facebook now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Uh, coming up, uh, of course, the Apple announcement. Coming up September 9th, we're uh, getting a list of people together, and I see 
Asus isn't the only one that's announcing in advance. Isn't Motorola doing an announcement in advance of that as well? well to me, they kind of already announced. So, I mean, they announced it at Google I.O. Okay. When but this Google, is, when this, Google this, announced... This is all the Android Wear stuff. stuff, right? Yeah, this this is a... a, a correct. It's a, it's a Wear, Wear device. I think September is going to be a huge month because I'm hearing Samsung's going to have an announcement in September. Microsoft's going to have an announcement. Zeus, Apple... I was actually going to do, if, if I can, and maybe I'll do it for next week. Um, Help my me out. favorite Help thing me. of the week next week is going to be the month of September. Help me out. A A Azus, is that the official? I Azus? I've been calling it Asus. Asus? Sure. I, I mean, don't know. That's what I've been calling for like 10 years with motherboards, and now that's like everything. So um, hopefully, hopefully. If I think I you're actually right, yeah. Am Asus. I right? Am I? I'm not, I'm not usually right about these things. What's called a sus? A sus? <laughs> oh, I don't like that. We're not doing that. I'll do it if it means my uh, my Nexus will come back faster from RMA. Um, also, something local here in Pittsburgh, Ignite Mode. You can check it out noon, newsunrising.org, a great uh, actually a great foundation locally that that funds inventive projects in the city. Uh, really cool guys. Uh, uh, actually, got to film some stuff with the fun uh, uh, party they were throwing for uh, Day of Giving uh, last year. Uh, for and sung, uh, but it's they are seeking innovative social startups for first day camp, and that's going to be September thirteenth, nine a.m. to three p.m. If you got a, they're looking. It's for a social innovation camp. It's a social innovation camp for ideas, leaders, and mentors. Uh, so go check that out at newsunrising.org slash ignite mode one. Uh, if you want more information on that, I've been seeing it on the Twitters this past week, so I wanted to get that out there for those that might be interested in it. Cynthia Klosky, she's at BigBigDesign.com uh, and, and MyBrilliantMistakes.com and at Cynthia Klosky. No, no, at Twitter, at Twitter.com, <laughs> something like that. Anything coming up you want to talk about? Uh, I don't have a whole lot, but so I'll just introduce you to someone like Cat Max. Oh. He felt like he needed to be on camera, so here he is. <laughs> yes mine is just harassing the audience so <laughs> awesome um and uh with that guys uh, check us out here every tuesday 6 30 p.m eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com you can join us in the chat room uh let us know uh your thoughts on things you can also let us know after the fact at awesome cast on the twitters uh we're on facebook and google if you'll find us on facebook we don't know anymore honestly after our discussion today <laughs> Um, but please favorite us so all your friends will apparently find out on Twitter now. <laughs> um, you can also drop his line up, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, we're on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, and Spreaker. Please subscribe to us, favorite us, like us, comment, share it with your friends. It helps get the word out and it helps get the show get bigger. Gets the show. What am I saying anymore? Uh, thanks again, to, uh, Cindy, Chilla, and the entire chat room, the awesome chat room going all night long. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Get it on.